putting yourself out there and, and being willing to, to serve. All right. Where did I end up last time? Uh, I'll go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Heidi, for coming forward. And, and honestly, your perspective is, is excellent. Uh, it, and what an eye opener to hear you speak here tonight and, and bring all these issues to the forefront. I had no idea about the point. I mean, the sub shop, I agree with you, playing Frogger <laughs> in that whole area. Uh, and so, and I'm not a person with disabilities, but for you, that's, that's pretty telling what you have to go through just to get your kids to the bookstore. Right. <laughs> and it's unfortunate that the point, you know, didn't I know. that. It's really surprising to me to hear you describe that. I have to be honest with you. And disappointing. It is disappointing. Yeah, yeah it really sure. is. So thank you for coming here tonight and sharing your insight and your perspective. We really appreciate it. I think you made a case for yourself. As I can't imagine any questions could add to or detract from. Um, I'm delighted you're as um, interested as you are good-natured about it and uh, yeah the, the, the tale too about the point which I hadn't hadn't dawned on me but if we did have a disability commission up and running at the time the planning board was going through their review of the plans it may well have been something that could have been addressed at that time but, yeah. uh, so just speaks to our need to you know correct our current mistakes and, and move forward I don't have any questions because your experience is tell it all. There's, there's nothing else that I can add to after what you uh, tell us what you have to go through to go to the common. They're all things that I would never even dream about or think about. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it until I had to do it myself. So, And Chase, you had asked earlier about ways to get uh, more people involved in oh, learning how to, <laughs> <laughs> um, to be more so aware of people with disabilities. Right, yeah. So um, I unfortunately have a very um, childhood disability uh, aspect. So in my thinking, it would be things like um, uh, baseball games for people with disabilities, where you come out and you would volunteer to help those people play baseball, or just like best buddies, you know, just uh, not on that <coughs> scope necessarily. But there are plenty of things out there that you can pull from and kind of recreate here in town to um, like just make people more aware of maybe we could add it to the cultural committee who knows you know like it's a culture kind of mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people when you're in a wheelchair you kind of have you look at other people's wheels when they go by you're like oh what's he sporting you know like stuff like that it's it's kind of a culture in itself so um, there's so many cool things that we could do just in general but yeah I do think that there are ways we could make people aware in general of how hard it is for people with mobility problems to get around and I, I think that gets to the point that everyone very much supports the idea of making things accessible but as the, the point shows uh, right. <laughs> we're not always well versed enough to ask the right questions right. and so I greatly appreciate you volunteering your time to uh, to serve on the Disability Commission and help us ask the right questions. Yeah, I think to that point, you know, we it's probably compliant at the point. Right. But it's not right. And it's exactly. not it's exactly. not logical for someone that's going through it. And I, I just um, I think Cindy mentioned you know that Napoleon to your good naturedness and you're sitting here in front of us, smile on your face and you know, it's like my mother always said, you, know, you never know what someone else is going through. Right, and, yeah. um, I think you know, my, my hands off to you as the father of five children. Um, you know, I certainly complain about them about certain things, but um, you know, I, I, God bless. I think uh, you're, you're uh, a rock. I, mean, I appreciate you coming forward and, and being willing to share your experiences and, and um, offer the perspective from a child, mm -hmm. you know, and parent of a child. Well, also, like, that we don't necessarily have many other candidates. Yeah, and because she's a child, I want her to grow through this community. Yeah. And like, let's, you know, there, and I know that there are other children, wheel, wheelchair bound children in this town, at least like four or five others that I can think of off the top of my head. So it's, uh, this is not an isolated situation. Um, but it's hard for us to come out be, or be seen or do participate, really. So I want to change that, yeah, for sure. No, I mean, it, it breaks my heart to hear you say that Castle in the Trees, which was built with accessibility in mind, isn't as accessible as, right. thought, you know, that 
that was get, right exactly I mean that was that was a, a stated objective you right. know that <laughs> um, and so it shouldn't have to not be seen all right I don't think we have any more questions thank you very much really appreciate it thank you all right um, Eric Mansa with the others thank you very much for stepping forward absolutely and um, for coming for us just like to learn a little bit about yourself and, sure. uh, a little bit about you and, and why you're interested in being the disability commission certainly um, I am Eric Manser I'm 44 uh, moved to Littleton three years ago uh, with my wife Lisa and our two daughters both in Russell Street School uh, we live right by the common on Great Road um, and our very uh, close to the <laughs> the nighttime road work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's happening. Um, I am someone who uh, is legally blind currently. I have a degenerative eye disease. I was diagnosed at age five. Uh, so my path, you know, to blindness has been gradual over many years. Um, you know, I, I could drive a car until about 15 years ago and gave that up voluntarily when it no longer felt safe. Um, and what I have remaining for vision today, I described as if you were looking through like a drinking straw, uh, and if you cover the end of the drinking straw with wax paper, uh, so kind of a small circle of straight ahead vision. Um, I work at IBM. Uh, my professionally, my focus is on technology accessibility. Um, you know, making sure that you know whatever sorts of technology that is emerging or being developed is being done in a way that can be used by everyone, regardless of ability or, or aging, uh, age-related impairment. Uh, I'm very active uh, at IBM with their global uh, resource groups for employees with disabilities. Um, I am someone who uh, is proud to compete around the country uh, as a blind athlete in marathons and triathlons. Uh, so very active in adaptive sports. Uh, as a result of this, I'm you know pretty heavily networked with uh, you know, various resources and agencies uh, that are concerned with disability and accessibility. So um, you know it is very much uh, you know kind of something that is personal uh, and something I feel uh, strongly about. I, I uh, you know like to be a kind of highly visible advocate in the community uh, and. You know, I actually uh, was, uh, it was suggested that I submit for a position because, you know, I, I had an understanding that there was uh, some challenge in, in getting active participation in a, you know, rejuvenated disability commission. And so I absolutely had an interest for, you know, as I sit here and listen this evening, I mean, I'm very impressed. We've got some clearly motivated and clearly qualified candidates up for it, so it, that's encouraging. Um, you know, in my work and accessibility on a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, a number of folks have hit on it already. I mean, what we see is that largely historically where accessibility has been viewed as a matter of compliance, uh, you know, something that you check a box to say that you've addressed it, uh, but don't entirely capture the spirit uh, of making something functional or usable. Uh, and so that, you know, in, from a technology stand, standpoint is something that we see pretty regularly. And, and so, you know, what we've found in, in the work I do at IBM is that kind of changing the discussion, changing the conversation so that, you know, it becomes more a matter of practicality and, you know, what, I mean, you can say that you put Braille, uh, you know, Braille on the drive up ATM buttons, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can check that box, but is that really something that, that is functional? You know, um, so, you know, really just, uh, you know, I see a lot of parallels uh, with, with kind of what I do on a daily basis and kind of the advocacy work that I do in the community as well. So, uh, so it's an honor to even be considered. So, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your perspective. Um, so, Chase, finished with you. So, start with sure. You. Uh, so, sort of back to the communication question. I mean, would you say that 
achieving the, the goals of the Disability Commission and achieving the goals of accessibility requires a cultural paradigm shift. And how do you go about, if yes, if I understand that correctly, how, how do you go about affecting that? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be gradual. I mean, it, it includes a raising of awareness, you know, um, just sort of engaging the community. But I, I think that the thing that's encouraging about it is that, you know, I, I think traditionally accessibility or matters of accessibility have, viewed, have been viewed largely almost as philanthropic, like something that you're doing for the separate group that has disabilities rather than something that's seamless with the larger community. And when you actually look at it a different way, um, you realize that accessible design is simply good design. I mean, it's elegant. Um, you know, things like wheelchair ramps, right? I mean, specifically, we're developed for wheelchair use. But who do we see using them in addition? We see moms pushing strollers. We see bicycles. We see the UPS guy with his dolly. So, you know, when things are designed so that everyone can use them, it actually benefits us all and it becomes a much larger discussion. So it would be kind of a gradual shift in the paradigm. And it's not something that happens overnight, but you know, just kind of engaging the community. I mean, you know, I, I considered myself kind of uh, um, lucky. You know, I've come to consider my gradual path to blindness as being almost fortunate because it's given me the perspective that you know, many people are losing or experiencing changes in ability due to aging. And so I've already got a perspective on, on what many experience later in life. And so, you know, when you um, can demonstrate that, you know, designing things that will work for all of us actually benefits everyone, then I, I think that that's very powerful and, and that there's a way uh, to kind of introduce that. And, you know, part of that challenge, I think, is that, you know, there are many that don't even um, identify as people with a disability, but when things are designed the right way, it, it never really becomes a matter, an, an issue for them. So, um, I don't know if that kind of answered that. No, that was, That's great. that was an extremely informative answer, so thank you, Eric. Mr. Knox. Eric, your last answer, talk about being powerful, I thought it was an extremely powerful statement and you made me look at things once again that I don't even think of, even the statement earlier before about going to a prior window with a, with a braille on it, things that I never think of. And I'm, right. and I'm encouraged to see that you're at IBM so you're in amongst all that technology. Absolutely. So I just, I just, I'll leave it right there, I want to thank you very much for applying. Thank you. I have no uh, hesitation in uh, and supporting, I look forward to seeing what you can bring to the town's um, perspective and review of this whole issue. I wonder if, if offhand, uh, you could enlighten us to barriers in town that you're aware of that we may not even you know, be considering at this point. What, what do you encounter in your day-to-day -day navigation through the community? Um, well, I do have, I mean, so much of, of what many have expressed already is, is, I mean, certainly I'm fully aware of this challenge is the Frogger uh, <laughs> uh, crossing the, the common there. Um, you know, I normally get my hair cut over at the, you know, at the Yankee Clipper and to get from my house by the common down there, I'm basically at points walking in the street, like in the road. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't do that if I if I were completely blind at this stage, but because I can still kind of make out, uh, you know, and I mean, so much of what I do, I mean, some people may see me, I actually uh, do a lot of running as part of my triathlon training and marathon training, and I wear a blind bib and uh, try and make myself pretty visible, but I feel very fortunate that I'm able to see where I am. But yeah, things like sidewalk challenges at points, um, you know, I mean, it, it's all stuff that I wouldn't be happy to contribute to the conversation about. But yeah, the, there's some, uh, you know, some areas, and I, I you know, certainly would uh, love to uh, troubleshoot a way to get to the point safely with the, with no ability to drive. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there's there's uh, it's all workable stuff. So, um, you know, be happy to contribute to any conversation. On it. Thanks for coming forward. Sure. It, yes, certainly. Thank you. Uh, your, you know, your personal and professional experience is it's very telling, and it's it's interesting to hear, hear your perspective on this issue. And I, again, thank you for coming forward. I appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, from my perspective, I just uh, a couple of comments. Just um, use the term integrated design, and I think that um, oftentimes we think of when it comes to like the pretty much in the case collaborative, um, and we try to do as much integration and mainstreaming um, with children and, and learning. And um, I, I hadn't really considered it relative to disabilities and integrating. And like you said, when, when you design properly, right. you're not designing specifically for folks with disabilities, you're just designing, you're creating a good design. Right. So, and so everybody is mainstreamed, and you know, the point about the UPS guy, and, and you know, the, the ramps serve a purpose beyond just getting a wheelchair into a, into a building or a facility. Right. Yeah, so, uh, and I mean, even things like Siri or Alexa, and I mean, huge benefits for people with disabilities, sure. but it's things that actually benefit us all. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much for coming out. Appreciate Absolutely. you coming forward. It'd be a great asset. Thank you. All right, the last candidate we have uh, for the Disability Commission is a, an applicant for a reappointment, Mr. George Sanders. So, Mr. Sanders, if you could uh, just give us a little view about yourself, and um, you've, you're up for reappointment, and uh, it's great to see some folks interested in, in this commission, and um, you've been the, the lone wolf <laughs> carrying the torch. <laughs> so uh, hopefully the torch. we can get some stuff, we can get some, uh, get some good stuff done. So just a little bit about yourself and um, why you want to continue on the Disability Commission. I live at 672 Great Road here in Littleton. First came out here and built my home in 97. Uh, and as Diane had, uh, as Corey had pointed out a little information there, uh, 2001, I believe it was the latter portion that uh, I went on the Disability Commission uh, along with my wife. And I think at the time, uh, that was, uh, I think, nine people on there. We had a few meetings, but for the vast majority of the meeting, it always was a problem uh, having the qualm. And that really what uh, I think one of the sore thumbs about the commission that really taking it down, because sometimes people show up, sometimes they wouldn't show up, and you have people come there and say, well, I guess we can't do anything, at least we can't vote on it or do anything. And uh, I uh, continue to be with the commission uh, for one, uh, because I've always been an advocate for uh, people with disabilities. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what it is to have a disability. And um, we had quite a few people that came to the meeting. Some of them had disabilities, some of them didn't. We had a lady on there, and it just seemed like nothing was going to happen. So she sort of kind of gradually stopped coming to the meeting. So I ended up being the only one that was left that was willing to, uh, you know, stick around for it. And uh, it just sort of kind of went to a defunct situation uh, with the town, uh, which wasn't great because some of the things that uh, we were trying to do was to try to make sure every application that came through the town for any type of work, uh, it had to circle through the Disability Commission so that we could take a look at it and make sure whatever was going to take place that you know you're going to be in compliance with that. And uh, the good thing about the Disability Commission, unless they've changed it, uh, there are certain criteria that falls into place. Once they say that you're going to do a certain amount of work to a facility, you have to bring it up to code once you do this certain amount of work. Other than that, um, unless you take the court and uh, pursue to have someone to uh, bring something up the code, uh, that's something that a person, anybody can do if they think that, you know, there's a hinder here, a hamper in them being able to participate, uh, they can go to court and do that. But the, but the American Disability Act is very clear, and the state was in compliance with it. The town had little information with regard to procedures and policy, and basic was not to uh, uh, 
do things that wasn't in compliance. So we base it at that time to sort of kind of accept the ADA and the state criteria, making it Littleton criteria. One of the things that if you have X parking space, and this you can do, you don't have to go to sewer or anything, but the power of the town has is that uh, you must have at least one parking space that is handicapped. And it must be van handicapped. And based on the number of criteria, based on the number of parking space that you have, then it tells you how many parking space you have. And I taken the time when I was on the committee and went through the entire town of Lilton and kind of every parking space at every facility to make sure that they was in compliance with it. If they didn't have signs, we had Mr. Jim Clyde, he ordered signs for us. We took the money and purchased it from the handicap funding that the police put in. Some people wanted to, uh, you know, get signs in the way they could get them. So we made the decision, okay, the sign isn't that much money. We'll give you the sign, you know, to put it up just to make sure that people comply with it. Some people would, you know, put notes on and get in argument, people parking it and, and hand the cat spot. That's not the commission responsibility. If you want to call anybody, call the police. That's the police responsibility to come down there and take it. So what we had with the previous chief was that uh, he would have his people to circle the different areas just to make sure people, you know, parking with the plate or either the placard in their window and so forth. So, you know, that was working out good. Uh, the one lady on the board there, uh, she was more concerned about the money aspects of it. And other people like myself was more concerned about what is that we're doing because I really don't like to spin my wheels doing nothing because time is valuable to me and I like to take the time that I'm putting into something and make it meaningful. And the things that we was looking at at the time was also, and I'll mention this now, like the upper coming up here. Uh, they're redrawing the highway. So the uh, curb permit, they, they ought to be able to cut well, this may be the town responsibility if they want to do it, is to cut so you can get on the upper common. You, you, you can't get on that from the roadway. Uh, my thing would be uh, at the corner there at uh, Great Road where the light is at, is to have one to come across there where somebody can get up. Then the other one would be at uh, Goldsmith Street to come across from that way to get in on that side. And then the other one would be coming on the Great Road up here where it comes to the point where that somebody can come in as well over there. So if people want to get on the common there that is handicapped, they got a problem. They got they got to step up here. Uh, they can't roll a chair, wheelchair up on there. Uh, they got them in a stroke. They got to pull it over to, to get over up there. Those things, why they are doing this up here now, could be eliminated. It's a very simple process. Uh, as far as the degree, I do see right now where they're resurfacing the roads, they are taking care of the sidewalks where they're putting in that, that degree where a wheelchair can go in onto the sidewalk. Great, yep. One of the problems that the town need to be concerned with also is uh, over here right across from uh, uh, Littleton Lama, the fire place, gas place, whatever you want to call it. He puts his sign up there on the sidewalk and he changed it to the railing up there. Now, if somebody come up there, and as bad as those cars come up there, and you know what they do, because now they're going to try to squeeze, go to the turn so they can get on 495. If somebody come up in that and bump into that, fall off into the, that shouldn't be there. I, I'm just pointing this out. It, it, it shouldn't let's, be there. Let's, let's circle back a little bit to what you but, and, and okay. the other disabilities. Well, this, these are the things that, 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 yeah. that you know uh, as to why you want to be on something is to try to, the betterment for the town in terms of people being able to get around so everybody that has a handicap can get around and do the things that are reasonable. And for instance, like the, the, the counter that we talked about here 
with uh, tax collector. The, the clerk's office there. I mean, uh, I think the easiest thing to do that is that probably, you know, you could lower a point on that counter where that, you know, you could see someone and put, you know, if it's, you know, handicapped or either you put a mirror up there so you can see over on that when you look up to see if anybody there. But I think uh, being on the Disability Commission is, is something that, uh, you know, I'm 100% disabled uh, from military wounds and, and disabilities. And uh, I'm uh, a lifetime member with the, the DAB, the American Disability uh, Organization there. So I'm aware of uh, a lot of stuff that was uh, disability related when I was on the committee and when we were functioning and we was looking into stuff and, and trying to do things. And we also asked uh, the, the billing department, uh, Mr. Rowland, uh, to sort of kind of ensure because at one point we had an engineer that was on the committee. So he would go out and he would check, for instance, the slopes uh, that was involved there. And they also assigned uh, one of the selectmen uh, to the disability commission there, which was at the time was to give that committee a little bit of um, uh, thrust <laughs> as we went forward with getting stuff done. So we got a lot of thrust tank. We got a lot of candidates here. We got, we got a lot of stuff to get through. So we get. We so this, this. anyway, that's uh, you know what I've done, and you know, and I've always uh, was there to try to take care of anything that needed to be done. <clears throat> and one of the other things we was going to do, I was going to uh, we was going to get the state to come down and uh, so sort of kind of look over things that we had here in Littleton and saying, you know, what can we do, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you are up for reappointment. Appreciate you coming forward and asking to be reappointed. Um, Does anybody have any questions, Mr. Sanders, for us reappointment? Just or? real quickly, what do you think the most effective thing you did was when the Disability Commission was m more well-formed? Well, I think one of the things was that uh, we um, got keep attention because we sent letters out to all of the business mm -hmm. advising them that uh, whatever the survey that I had did in terms of the parking space for number one was to be able, if they needed signs and so forth, to let us know we could get the signs for them. That was probably the most effective thing because we had quite a few people came and asked for the signs. And those that didn't know that the one parking space they had that was, wasn't a handicap, that was handicapped but was not van accessible, that they had to make it van accessible. So that was another thing that uh, they changed, which means they lost, an, they lost another parking space in doing so. Mm -hmm. And just basic, you know, if they needed uh, any assistance, you know, well, portion or whatever they had concerned, anything that affected them, then we try to get the answer for them or either go to the state to get an answer for them. Back to communication again. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you uh, reapplying. Excited to give you some more people to work with. <laughs> Joe? I just want to thank you, Mr. Stevens, for sticking with that committee all the years when we went was in functional. I have no questions at this time. Sounds like you got a lot of pent up uh, uh, <laughs> ideas and activity you want to get back involved with, George. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you've hung in there and um, help is on the way. So we're going to get you some you know, folks to join you. And thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Sanders, for being here tonight and reapplying. You're, you're obviously dedicated to this issue and finding solutions. You have some good ideas, and you're certainly committed to the yeah, I'd like to say thank you as well, not just for your service to the town, but also to the country. And, and you know, as, as a disabled American vet, very much appreciate it. Appreciate you coming forward tonight. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, that closes out the interviews with the Disabil Disability Committee, folks. Um, we've got um, specific um, guidelines under which we have to fall. Um, it's a five-member committee. It's um, 
a committee that will have staggered three-year terms. So we need to have a majority or three members that um, have stated that they have a disability. We need to have a member that has an immediate family member who has a disability or presents with a disability. And then we need um, an elected official. So um, I'll put some discussion, consideration. You mentioned for the record that we didn't, although he wasn't able to attend tonight, we did receive a letter from Michael Quarry. I did not mention it for the record, but uh, yeah, we did receive a letter from Mr. Uh, Michael Quarry, who is, um, has applied, given us a letter, um, and uh, was unable to be here for uh, uh, death in the family. So he, um, he is an applicant who would meet the criteria of um, a disabled individual, as Mrs. Quarry mentioned. One question, since Michael couldn't be here, is this something that we want to put off for another two weeks or one week? Can, can talk to him in the circumstances that he couldn't be here? But um, I would entertain that. I just think that folks have been well, hanging in it for... I understand uh, that. Uh, yeah. What, did, what do you guys think? I, I could go either way. I mean, I'm prepared to, you know, make, make tough choices, but I also... Um, I think that there's an opportunity where we could uh, interview Michael. That's, we've been able to do that with everybody. We, we moved a couple of these other committees off a week. So, like, either way. Most most of those instances, however, the uh, the sitting board had, had an interest in, in doing the interviews themselves. Correct. So I think that we're, if we're uh, content with the letter that was submitted, I'd be willing to move forward just sort of just some closure to some folks that have come out tonight. But um, if, if it's the pleasure of the board that I have, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to entertain that motion. I would, I, I think I'd prefer to move forward tonight to absence. I mean, if, if someone has a compelling <coughs> argument otherwise, but uh, Mr. Curry's letter laid out his argument pretty clearly. I, I think it does him service. So. Yeah, it, it doesn't give us the opportunity to ask the questions, it, that's right. which, which is unfortunate, but, um, um, you know, there's the folks coming forward and, and, and stating that they have a disability. And some some are more comfortable than others um, stating that. And um, I think you're right, Chase, that it does. Uh, the, the letter does present. It, what his wishes it's are. certainly much more than just I couldn't be here tonight. Right. Uh, so let's do it. But you want to do it by categories, Mr. Chairman, or because we have certain obligations to meet in the uh, appointment. Uh, How do you want to? I, I suppose we could, uh, we could do that. We could, uh, we need to have a majority or three members that are disabled, so I suppose mm -hmm. we could, we could uh, do a motion. Any input, Mr. Mr. Bergman, do a motion with, uh, somebody could propose three folks with you, disabilities. You've got three categories that, as you say, three out of five, at least three out of five need to be disabled persons themselves. Correct. Uh, next category is you need a, uh, someone who no. has an immediate family member who is disabled. And the third is elected. an elected or appointed official. Well, I'll make a... Mr. Uh, Chair, oh, I'm sorry. No. I, I believe someone, I saw a hand up. Someone had a comment. I, I was curious if the board has the uh, discretion to expand the Disability Commission to include more than five members. We, the no. board does not have that discretion. No, no, no without town, town meeting. meeting vote. I got it. We, we could at a future town meeting, just as three times before town meeting has set the number. And first time it was five, then it was nine, and then it was five again. So we town meeting could do that again. Unlike the Cultural Commission where we, we had the, the, we were able to expand the, the appointment to 22. Right. And the state so does that as a, what, a population based thing? Is that how they? No, it's, the, it's, it's five to 13 based on the, on the statute. But then we voted at town, we as a town voted at town meeting oh. to change it back down from right. nine to five, I believe. No, no, no I'm talking about the Cultural Commission. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It's up to 22 members. And it's like, yeah, all right. Never right. They, yeah, that's by staff. I think that was by staff. Right. Um, by, by my count, as people have described them, we have four applicants who themselves have a disability. We have 
four applicants who are a family member of someone with a disability, and we have two elected officials. Some of those, obviously, overlapping. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll get the ball rolling. I think to satisfy the, the need to have a family member represented, uh, um, I'd like to move that we consider Heidi Madison or, or move that the board appoint Heidi Madison to a term on the uh, Disability Commission for a term expiring. Uh, Keith, what do we do here? Uh, pick 20, 19, or 18. 20. Two, three June 30th, 2020. 2020. Just to get the ball rolling. So that would be for the <laughs> family member position. And if we were to do that, that would mean that uh, Ms. Brownson and Mrs. Crory would be mutually exclusive there as their relationship is both through a family member. So we would choose one or the other. Well, yeah, uh, on that, for, right. for that as, category, as the yes. yes. Yeah, they still are in the running for other, <laughs> with the other. Uh, uh, no, they're not, unless I misunderstood. No, that. they're both elected officials. So. That's what I mean. They would only. We would have to select one or the other right. as an elected official. Gotcha. And yes. whoever we yeah, didn't right. select oh, yeah. would, I, I, would should not be should be clear them. about right. this. Yeah, there's some of these people have overlapping um, <clears throat> qualifications. So uh, yeah, this this would uh, limit. Uh, I believe, as you described, is abs absolutely correct. But in any event, uh, right, so the motion made to uh, uh, sorry appoint Heidi Madison as the uh, the term expiring 2020. And second, if you need a second, I will second. Immediate family. Okay, so it's moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you very much for stepping forward. Um, I'll say it now for everybody. Whoever is appointed, you do have to go to the town clerk and get sworn in and, and uh, um, get your marching orders. All right. So we have. Three disabled seats that need to be filled. I would argue that um, Mr. Sanders, as a reappointment, um, is. Uh, I would second that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't make the motion. <laughs> I think that um, you know, having hung in there and, and mm -hmm. given his time as long as he has, I, I, I'd love to see a motion for him as uh, one of the three disabled. That's a reappointment. As complicated as it is, you want to do each individually, I would suggest maybe that's the thing to do. In other words, I'll, I'll uh, did you make that motion, Chase? I'll I, I made that motion. All right, good. Then I'll second his motion, and we'll handle those. To reappoint Mr. Sanders? Yes, right. Okay, all those favor signal last thing I Oh, do we have a term on oh, that one? We could also do 2020 for that one. We'll yeah. Next to reappointment. Yep, 2020. Going to hang around for three years? I'll try. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposition? No. It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Thank you. Can I see the clerk, please? All right, so we do have two additional um, disabled seats we need to fill, and we have one elected uh, appointment, so on that one. Um, Here, the, the night I would be most interested in seeing Mr. Mansur serve, given his technical expertise in the area. Um, I think you would bring an awful lot to the Disability yeah. Commission on that point. That was thinking okay. of Follow the motion. I'll, I'll, seconded. Okay. All right. So for a term expiring, Mr. Mansell, do you have a preference as a 19? Okay. <laughs> 19? 19. 2019? Yeah. Okay. Um, Move and seconded for a term ending expiring in 2019. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I wanted to interview Mr. Crory, but before we decide not to, judging by his letter, I would nominate Mr. Crory. Motions were made for Mr. Crory as uh, the third and final disabled candidate for a term expiring 2018. Is there a second? Uh, yes, yeah, second. Okay, let's move and second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, I'm just going to say discussion. Uh, this is one of the first times we run into a, a vote where we have to eliminate somebody, and I, uh, I, I think that's unfortunate. But I'm, you know, I vote, I'll vote aye as well. Uh, it's just we've had a great time. I think past three weeks doing all these interviews and getting to hear what a cross section folks. of the town yeah. we have. And uh, the only rotten part is, you know, 
not finding a spot for somebody. No, that's a good point. Yeah. And for the record, there I would have voted nay. Not. Uh, I didn't call the nays. Yeah, yeah no, no, not not anything not to do with Mr. Crory. Uh, no right. problem. All right, so it's four to one. Uh, that was 18, wasn't it? Mr. Mansour was 19. Right. Was, that, was that 19 as well? You got two. You got two 20s, two 19s, and one 18. Okay, so, Mr. Mr. So, two of the disabled folks would be 19. Should we consider staggering? Okay, you can make, uh, if you yes, want to so make that 18. Yeah, that, right, and then we fine. can just make the elected official 19. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So that was a four one vote on uh, that's Mr. Crory. <laughs> And so, with the matter of the elected, is it elected or appointed? Well, it doesn't matter. Elected, elected or appointed, appointed is the language. Both elected candidates. So it doesn't matter. Um, Here, you know, I think we talked a little bit about the, the issue of recusal with respect to the library. And reading the, reading the language, the statutes notes either an elected or appointed official. And it seems mm -hmm. to me that there are enough elected and appointed boards that the, the statute would envision someone who would otherwise serve in some other capacity here. And the idea of conflicts of interest are inherent in, in many elected and appointed positions. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see I, that to be a, I don't believe, I don't believe, I didn't, a major detriment. No, I don't that. I, I agree with you on that, Chase. I don't think that that's, that's not a, a mind-changing issue for me, and I'm not even sure. Jenna, if you're on there, you would need to recuse yourself. Uh, I'm not sure. I think yeah. we might want an opinion. For but you. I, you know, I, I just uh, with the two of them, um, both bring some very strong um, qualities to the table, and uh, uh, I guess I'm more persuaded that um, Jenna and Ms. Brownson could continue to advocate from the position as a library trustee on a very important issue of the accessibility there. And that uh, Mrs. Crory has a broader uh, range of, you know, of input based on the traffic that comes before the clerk's office. And uh, that being said, I, you know, I can go either way. I, I, I stand by the, the care custody control issue. I think that if uh, a member of the board of selectmen or the school committee, or um, in this case, the library trustees, there's, there's the whether it's the perception of a conflict mm -hmm. or an actual conflict. I, I think that uh, anyone who uh, has the opportunity to be affected by or have to accuse themselves from a vote that could be directly impacted. Again, there's five members on there. Um, there's been challenges in the past with, with seating a board, and if one of the members was unable to vote on an issue because of town council coming back to us and, and, and telling us that uh, they would have to recuse themselves, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm also more with, uh, somewhat hesitant to pointing two people who live together. Um, I think that presents a, a certain lack of perspective there that we could get more diversity in perspective. Um, That's good. I think they both add an awful lot to the commission, mm -hmm. their perspectives, for sure. Yes, we do have the history of George and Ivy Sanders serving for many years on that committee, too. So, duly noted, and I, I think, you know, if, if we had five members, I would be, or five applicants, yeah. I would be more than happy to, to see two members. Who, uh, I don't see cohabitating as an issue for this, for this commission, so. Let me, uh, I guess I, I'd like to say that a different way, just to frame it. I like the variety of perspectives, right? And, uh, okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion for a uh, candidate for that last seat so that we can move on to uh, <laughs> Ms. Harding's been sitting here patiently waiting to be appointed to the person, reappointed to the personnel board. <laughs> <laughs> PMBC. Yeah. PMBC. Yeah. I don't really care if Bob's been sitting here all night. He's <laughs> got the Ouch. afternoon golfing, so. Yeah. He's uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion that we appoint Diane Crory for the uh, elected official term um, to end, expire on 2019. Um, um. Motion's made. 
Second. Seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Four one. But uh, right. you know, um, if the interest is there, we have the opportunity to expand the committee uh, at town meeting. Mm -hmm. Done it, done it before. Right. It's certainly going to expand it to something. Right. Yeah. Thank all right. You all. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate uh, all the perspective and uh, certainly some great ideas. All right. We do have up next. There we go. Historical commission. You were, you interviewed the applicants last time, and we're waiting the recommendations from the committee, which came in. Rachel, I believe. Rachel, I believe they came back with Fred. And uh, we did appoint Gabriel yes, earlier tonight for cultural. And I think that was kind of where her, her, I think she felt as though she could still be involved with historical based on her interview last week. So I definitely understand the motion to uh, appoint Ms. Robinson based on the recommendation of the. Uh, this is so moved. Move and second. Okay, second, thank you. Let's move and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? To be honest, thank you very much. Next up, we have uh, one of our two applicants for reappointment here tonight for um, the Permanent Municipal Building Committee. Mr. Romney, thank you for your patience. <laughs> All we want is your name, rank, and serial number, and we'll take a vote. <laughs> I missed dinner and everything. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> no, it's okay. A um, little, little bit about yourself and why you want to stay on the PBC. Uh, Bob Romley, you live at Mill Road in Littleton. Um, lived in town all my life. Uh, I was coaxed into joining the PMBC by Bill Cole to fulfill the rest of um, uh, Jeff Fiend's membership, and I immediately got thrown into the kitchen, the, <laughs> the field, the fire station, the, field, the playground. So I've had my run of just about everything, learning how to hire P, uh, how yeah, OPMs and yeah. everything, and working with contractors and and as t uh, Anthony can attest to, I'm not afraid to say something to the contractors when we feel that we're not getting a good deal. I can't imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he carries his side up. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a teleport now. <laughs> So the way I heard it was you lost a bet on the golf course. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Billy's always paying. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, being retired and from the town, and I mean, I did 30 some odd years in the police department and know my ins and outs of the town. And I like it. I got thrown into it. I enjoy it. It gives me something to do. Um, I've had the pleasure of serving uh, with, with Bob and I were working on uh, the alumni field as uh, myself as a member of AFRAC, a representative from the Board of Selectmen, and Bob was representing the PMBC when we were doing the interviews um, for um, the designer. Designer, yeah. 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 And um, it, it, great perspective. Um, you know, you Learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, we all did. We all did. It's, it's, you know, it's, we don't, none of us went to school for this necessarily. But, um, <laughs> Um, we all learned a lot on the, on the job. And, they start um, throwing the acronyms around about, you know, <laughs> all these... OPM. OPM. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, but it's, uh, Bob is a, a great candidate. I'm glad that he's, he's uh, interested in, in staying on, and I would definitely... Uh, Sure. If you guys have any questions for him, by all means, but I think that... Uh, I drew the short straw and ended up as uh, the uh, <laughs> vice chair. <laughs> We've got a great PMBC. There's a lot of strong personalities on there. I can't imagine that if Bob Romney, I knew 30 years ago when he was a sergeant, imagining that you would be the voice of reason in any room. But, uh, <laughs> a lot of love. <laughs> But, uh, I'm glad he's uh, <laughs> glad he's there doing his part. And if he can if he can sit between some of those folks and keep them from uh, swinging at each other, then God bless him. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, no, no, our, our most senior member has taught me a, a lot about it. He's got a wealth of knowledge. Uh, 
now, and they, uh, Joe and uh, and uh, we're referring to them. Fortunately, they they uh, they focus on the, the contractors, uh, focus their fire on them. So I know they uh, serve the town well, and you do oh, too. No, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Joe puts us all into it, and sometimes it doesn't sound that He's way, up to like two, I guess, yeah. is why I brought up his name. He, yeah. he, uh, he goes through a lot, and, you know, in reviewing a lot of the, the paperwork, and sometimes it always doesn't sound that he's doing the right thing, but he, he is. As much as chucking him buttheads. <laughs> we love Joe. <laughs> Okay, the record shows you guys save us money and, and look out for the town's interest well. Yeah, and you know, we hired the, the OPM that, for the um, for the fire station and um, the deputy and the chief and I did a lot of calls around him. I think we hired a great OPM. Those guys have really done a lot. Yeah, we've heard good things about them. Yeah. Who's in here last week? Kevin. Mm -hmm. And the, the yeah. clerk of the works they got down there is, he's right on everything. That's good. <clears throat> All right, so Anita doesn't have to wait. Oh, she left, huh? She, no, I think she just went to the ladies' room. I, there, I heard a phone ring and she wanted to answer a call. <laughs> uh, we, both the same date, right, Keith? So we could just make one motion? To, well, let's. Uh oh, sorry. I, I'd rather appoint Bob tonight and have Joe attend a, a subsequent meeting on Spike. I'd like to try to put him on earlier. Um, I think it's, it's better for his schedule. Does he have the four term term four term expire? It does. Can he? he he will serve until, until we make an appointment, correct? The uh, bylaw for the PMBC provides that a member serves till their term expiration or until their successor is qualified. So if you, I mean, your next meeting is July 10th. Um, serve. There will be no successor not. appointed between now and then, so you can take it up at that time. Okay, great. Yeah, I would, I would say just because of the way the bylaws work. This would, and it's up to five years, the term on the PMBC is up to five years, so. Um, how many, what do you bid? I'll do the five. Five? five. If I make oh, it that off. <laughs> Get off for good behavior, though. So. That, that may happen. <laughs> All right, I'll move the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint uh, Bob Romley to a term on the Permanent Municipal Building Committee for a term expiring June 30th, 2022. 20, Second. <laughs> One second, all those favor single with it. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Mr. Roman. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And you, and you too, Cindy. <laughs> Personnel board. <laughs> Grand entrance. <laughs> all right, there is. Um, just got here. I just got here. I just. So, okay, Gary Wilson was. Uh, Hmm? Have you been here the whole night? The, the whole night. night. Yeah, the whole night. The whole night. We tried to make it entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see who else was going to volunteer. I wanted to see it. the road improvement project that we did. Yeah, yeah right, yeah, exactly. Uh, we want to know sorry. when Russell Street's going to be fixed. <laughs> um, so the other night, the FinCom appointed Mr. Wilson to the FinCom seat. Mr. McRae stepped down. Mr. Wilson was appointed to uh, take that seat. So Anita is up for reappointment. Um, one citizen at large with an expiration of 6 30 2020 um, having served briefly on the personnel board with Rita, I think, I'm sorry Anita um, certainly qualified with her experience in the town hall um, and Anita had served great, for many great, years as the employee representative right, right. before she yes. was appointed that's yeah, large yes. before uh, that served I... the town well you were the reason why we have personnel by law. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and probably Paul's the only one that's up here on the board that remembers when that all, yeah. all started way back in 2006. But I think having it gotten together and by 2008 taking a vote to have the personnel board, I think that it has really served the town well. It's professionalized things. And it's yeah. made everything work so much smoother and people yeah. get along so much better than they used to. Everything's yeah, standardized yeah. and we've done an awful lot, accomplished a lot of tasks. You know, helping with the sick leave policy was one of the biggest ones in that. Right. That was a really big achievement and I think it's really helped the town. And I just have a passion for employees being treated equally. And as long as everybody's being treated equally and fairly and they're heard when they have issues. I think that's really important, and 
So I'd still like to serve if you'll have me. Thank you for stepping forward and uh, being willing to serve for another three-year term. Appreciate it. Anybody have any questions? Or? Uh, this no. is an easy one. She's, no. been, she's, she's president of creation. Why not? I have the pleasure of sitting next to her during the meetings, and she tells me what I should be doing. So <laughs> <laughs> That's the job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, I'll formalize that. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Anita Harding to a term on the personnel board for a term expiring June 30th, 2020. Second. Move a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. You do need to go see Diane. Get sworn yes. in again. All right. I'll see her tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> a little blood draw. Could have saved yourself a lot of time tomorrow, Diana. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what can we do here, Keith? To, uh... So we've got several motions. Um, I, I guess my well, I, it is absolutely time sensitive. Bond anticipation yeah, the boss. <laughs> procurement of cruisers. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you do those. If there are things that you can do just by reading the motion, you should do those. If there are things that you want to discuss. Um, I think we may have to push that off to a next right. meeting. I'll cut to the chase on the website, which I had a lot of verbiage uh, to offer at the last meeting. I'm very satisfied with the, the work to date. Uh, I had some conversation specifically with uh, Anthony about integration of the efforts that we've already been doing with the Economic Development Committee, and um, I'm satisfied with the uh, the basic look. I'm satisfied that the uh, townspeople have had the opportunity to have input, and I'm also satisfied that we have the opportunity to make changes going forward if that's what we deem fit. So it's like a snake I'm well. not going to hold it up any further. Right. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. For Paul's benefit, I'd like to summarize some of the answers to what do you think about the colors and layout? Uh, we have great, very nice. I like these colors. I'm fine among the comments. I'm just glad the questions were asked. All right? <laughs> They didn't know they were talking a, about these people away. Awesome. Yeah. 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 What should be at the top? Uh -huh. Okay, don't poke the bear. Let's, let's go with the motion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Going good. Is it royal blue? Right. Everybody. Uh, let's retain a motion. <laughs> oh, awesome. nice. Bergman's getting punch drunk over here. Move the board select with you. Authorize the execution of contract on Ritual Town Hall, uh, Town Hall Holdings LLC doing business. Ritual Towns and Schools of Boxborough, Mass. For the sign and development of an upgrade to the Littleton, Town of Littleton's municipal website in an amount not to exceed $20,000. Second. In all caps, make sure you ladies leave in the mix. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for doing the work to ask all those questions. Wow. Thank you. I'm not at all. Thank you. Busy day tomorrow. A lot of swearings. A lot of swearings. Next one on bond anticipation notes. Steve Venuti described the process last time. He's here yeah. again just to. Answer any further questions. Just to get gas. So well, there is a 16-day waiting period. We just didn't realize we were going to do it in one night. Uh, so. All right, good deal. So we, yeah, we did go through this. We had all the discussion oh, and everything. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So you'll, 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 you'll be signing days. things next week uh, in the office to, once we reach the waiting period. The <coughs> board of selectmen vote to authorize the sale of two of a two million five hundred and thirty-six thousand dollar bond anticipation note of the town of the town for alumni field renovation construction authorized by the November sixteenth, two thousand sixteen special town meeting, Article Seven, dated June twenty third, two thousand seventeen, and payable March 29, two thousand eighteen. Motion is made. Second. Seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Uh, D, I guess. C. 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 To adopt the investment okay. policy amendments that were introduced last week. I was just buying stuff. Sorry. <laughs> Steve, right, this, that was the first reading last time. Okay, yes. Steve right. went through it. Uh, Steve, do you have any comments for us on it? Do you have any questions for Steve? Understand a motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the investment policy prepared by the Town Treasurer as introduced at the selectmen, Selectmen's meeting on June 5th, 2017. All in favor, so Second. All right, second by Mr. Glavy. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, <laughs> now we can buy police cruises. <laughs> Rapid pace. That's not what I'm <laughs> And you're not doing a presentation, are you? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you you're wrong. Welcome! <laughs> you were obviously uh, was approved at town meeting. Um, it's our standard replacing uh, two of the frontline marked uh, vehicles. Um, there's obviously some other purchases to be made as I laid out my uh, quick letter to you. Uh, but the one reason I brought it forward here is because we were just notified that Ford is finally building them again and there's going to be much delivered. So I wanted to get it in because in case we could see it before your next meeting. So. Possibly so. These are done under the uh, Plymouth County bid. It's all uh, under the state bid uh, contracts. Can we get them down though? What do you think? Oh, you can. We can choke a lunch on these uh, negotiations. Mm -hmm. Throwing a new set of tires. Chief, do you expect the, Jones. the delta there? So we appropriated 117. We've got about 93 for these two. Are you going to use all of that delta for? Portable radios in and of themselves are about four to forty-five hundred dollars a piece. Okay. So yes, because we you know we we started doing it that way because it was a better way to replace things and come in and all of a sudden need 125 thousand dollars for portable radios. Sure. So what we do is we replace equipment, you know, with each car too. Okay. Just wanted to understand the logistics. Thanks. Any further discussion? Anything else? No, sir. Okay, I understand the motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Article 8 of the May 1st, 2017 Annual Town Meeting to authorize procurement of MHQ Municipal Vehicles, Marlboro Mass, and the Plymouth County Commissioner's bid contracts of two marked and equipped 2017 Ford Utility Police Interceptor Vehicles, totaling $92,962. Second. Moved and seconded by Mr. Glady. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, those, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What's the, the acronym, acronym for, for police assessment? Ford Utility Police Interceptor Vehicle. Is that a food piv? <laughs> <laughs> just creating acronyms over here. Talk it's getting nice. It's getting punchy. Yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah, break so a leg on those assessments for the accreditation tomorrow. That's tomorrow? And the yeah, next day. Yeah. I came up fast. All right, yeah, good luck. Not fast enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, um, AD, do we want to jump in here and um, establish the special gift fund? So much discussion around this, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I'd like to, two, two points. One, credit our, uh, our colleague, uh, Cindy Napoli, with, with uh, leading the charge on this and, and bringing it back, you know, to the board for... Uh, and not only that, but acting independently to uh, to get it going. So I thank you, Cindy, for your efforts here. The, the other point is um, I just wanted to, to um, mention, and maybe it should be you know formalized in the language here that mm -hmm. what we're referring to as Veterans Corner here, is, you know, actually that was dedicated by the town as. Uh, Romley Corner, because for 29 years, uh, actually Bob Romley, who just left it, his dad, Ed Romley, was the veterans agent, and he did the private fundraising to get those granite blocks right. out there, and the corner is Ed, Edgar. Edgar P. Romley. Right, right. So discussing that with the veterans, um, Paul Romley did not want to bring, make it about Edgar no. P. Romley. He wanted to just call it, they decided to just call Veterans it Veterans Corner. Corner. Oh, wow. Uh, they didn't want to give him the name recognition for this okay. update because we did have that discussion. Okay, yeah, it's the Edgar P. Romley yep. Veterans Corner. But that was their decision. That was something that Paul raised. And uh, knowing uh, Edgar, so I remember Ed, and I'm sure Joe did too, they, he wouldn't have wanted that recognition, but we gave it to him anyway. Right, uh, right. So. <laughs> but he did. He did what? I mean, 29 years as the veterans agent, and uh, he sweated through every parade about you know whether every Boy Scout troop and band was going to be uh, in the right order, and uh, and then he went out and did the fundraising that you're doing uh, now uh, for the initial uh, um, establishment of the corner as we know it. So if they've already, if that's what the family wants, that's then what they, fine. That's what they yeah. decided upon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> so if if we were to vote to establish this this. Um, this gift special gift fund right. that would just enable us to receive funds for the purposes of being dispersed without any further approval, correct? Right. Yeah. You, would, you would not need to go to town meeting to spend these funds. Right. 
So does anybody need any further discussion around that? Or? The only thing I would mention is that given the, the growth and prevalence of things like this, we might want to put together a policy at right. some point on that matter. Uh, so right. We'll we'll volunteer for an assignment down there to the yeah. case and try to uh, policy. Put them in the matrix. Love, love policy. Put them in the matrix. Right. Sit down with, with but no, I, given that, I mean, you've had a lot of success with these, Cindy, right. for right. multiple purposes. Right. So, something to think about. But definitely, no, let's absolutely. keep it moving. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bonnie was good. We she can have a discussion about that. She had done research on GoFundMe about different municipalities that have done these similar mm -hmm. campaigns mm -hmm. and she looked yeah. into it about how yeah, they were yeah, set up and, guidelines. right and mm -hmm. the guidelines and there was some specific language that she recommended just letting people know uh, that the town will be managing the funds under chapter 44 right exactly so mm -hmm. a disclaimer so to speak okay I understand the motion thank you very much sir. you're welcome you the board of selectmen vote pursuant to mass general law chapter 44 section 53a and the selectmen's policy on solicitation and acceptance of money and non-monetary gifts for public purpose to solicit and accept donations of fund in aggregate up to $50,000 through a crowdfunding campaign, GoFundMe, into a special gift fund to be used to defray the costs of the Veterans Corona Memorial Project. Second. Move and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, um, item 9A is minutes approval from the meeting of June 5th, 2017. What do you think, Mr. Glavy? Well, it's uh, discerning eye. Has an almost lyric quality that I. Uh, it says Glavy and everything. Accurately stands up. represents the, uh, <laughs> the meeting, as I recall it, fondly. Uh, there's, there's a lot of notes to be taken. Like a motion to <laughs> Uh, so uh, with that, well, usually the clerk should make the motion on the minutes, correct? That's correct. But if you really want to do it, Paul. No, no, I'm just going to. Move a vote like we vote to approve the meeting of meeting minutes of June 5th, 2017. Second. Move and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. Okay. <clears throat> At this time, we will adjourn from our open meeting and we will be entering into executive session with no intent of coming out of executive You're session from your 6 30 meeting you may you may adjourn it and then you will convene your nine o'clock meeting what do you say okay. right they were posted separately, yeah, posted separately. because yeah, the first one was already posted before the before before the second item came out so yeah. we so we'll just simply adjourn Adjourn the, the, adjourn the me uh, meeting that began at 6 30 so motion to adjourn i'll move so moved second so move and second. All those favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Come on, yeah. Okay. And you are now convening your your 9 p.m. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Correct. We are now. Which you convene in public session. And Correct. Then you take the vote to, uh, to go into executive. <laughs> we, we will not repledge. <laughs> I can't pick up that box again. Um, I will entertain the motion to go into executive session because we are currently open in open meeting. Yeah. Excuse me. Right. We are now convening the 9 o'clock meeting, 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 meeting as at uh, 1025. Yeah. Okay. So move the board of selectmen vote pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection A, Clauses 3 and 7 to convene the executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation since an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the board, and not to convene an open session thereafter. This requires a roll call vote. It's been moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, Ms. Napoli. Aye. Mr. Glavy. Aye. Mr. Knox. Aye. Mr. Gobi. Aye. And the chairs in favor. So we are unanimous. We are now in executive session. Thank you very much, folks. Our next, next posted meeting is July 10th.